dun 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 dun. I'd like some truths today. Here are some truths. I'll do the truths right now. Dun dun the truths with David Badil. Hello, David. Hello. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Here I've always loved that theme tune, you know. I invented it. Wild. <laughs> very good. Who doesn't love it? Oh god. I get goose pimples when you sing it. <laughs> it's a bit like when they were John Dunn candle in the wind when Diana died. Yeah. Although in the Abbey. Yeah, it won't sound as well. That's oh. my guess if you release it as a single. When I die, I'd like you in my sweet ceramic to go. This is the true today. <laughs> Russell's dead. <laughs> I'll do that. God, I'm feeling up just at the thought of my own death. Sometimes I think about my own death. Do you? I right. thought you thought it couldn't happen. Well, just the other day I saw you, and someone, you were in a graveyard, you told me, with some children, and you were worried wait, about, wait about that image. You, you were worried that children might be assaulted by the idea of death, but they said, no, everyone dies, and you said, no, I won't. <laughs> and the children said, they were seven, they're going, you will die, everybody dies. And I goes, no, not me. Look at me, I'm moving around. My nanny was moving around, then she went to a hospital, and she stopped moving, and she died. These children from Mary Poppins. <laughs> that's where I kidnapped them from. No, actually, that's you it. Will, you won't die, because you look like Jesus. That's right. And, and he, he didn't die. He died, came back, but then what did he do after that? Died again. Almost nothing. So it's like an interlude. I'm back. <laughs> oh, brilliant. What are you going to do now? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye again. Yeah, Why did trick. you do this to it's us? It's a magic trick. And then he's off again. What's happening in the Daily Telegraph? A big tombstone of prejudice and ancient beliefs, benefit cuts, always, you know. I don't even need to read the story to know that like, the, the subtext will be people on benefits are bastards. Can I tell you something? Yeah. If I saw that in a headline, mm. I would not read it. Well, <laughs> well, in all this here, that is the boring headline. Well, go cool, on then, what do you want to say about... No, I want to say this. All right, that, joking aside. The Cornish are an official minority. Now, uh, I am with a Cornish person. Do you know that this story? No, what's the problem? It's not a problem. It's a strange thing. It's they've, a problem with the Cornish, man. They've, they've made Cornish into a minority. Now, it's interesting for you, with your ideas about spiritual union that you bang on about all the fucking time now. I'm going to bang on about yeah. them as soon as you stop talking. Because what they've done is they've created yet another arena of difference, which is <laughs> Cornish. Right? That is now a minority... You don't know what it's like to be Cornish! That, what, was that? what accent was that? <laughs> Can you do a Cornish accent? Oh, they're like that, aren't they? Yeah, oh, so do that again. Do that again. You don't know what it's like to be Cornish <laughs> and our Cornish problems. Yeah, We've got our own language. What does it sound like there, their language? Just no idea. But Morwenna, who I'm with, uh, is Cornish. Uh, mm. She actually won a prize for Cornish speaking when she was 10. Anyway, it now <laughs> means that my children, who are already half Jewish and half Catholic and half whatever, they're now another minority. Cornish. Cornish. So they have another string to their minority bow. What if they select Cornishness as the part of their identity they most keenly pursue? Making pasties, yeah. demanding to live Ice a little cream. bit like, oh, I yeah. like some of Being nice. on the seaside. We yeah. want to go, we just want to be by the seaside. <laughs> yeah. so I don't know what the minority characteristics of the Cornish are meant to be, besides pasties. You've, you don't always like to be Cornish! <laughs> <laughs> you've gone straight for the, you know, slightly root one ideas of pasty. That's not really well, that's quite a cultivated <laughs> insight. Continued on page two. It's no. nothing, it's just an advert for Volkswagen. They've not even lost interest. Shall we do <laughs> it? Here it is. Cornish got an official national minority status. Oh, you're one of those people that takes the, the glasses, glasses off to read, That's because I'm old. That's what you have to do when you reach a certain age. You don't have glasses if you take them off. <laughs> <laughs> I have to need to use your eyes. to see further away. There's nothing going on over there that concerns you, mate. No, I have to. Except the Cornish <laughs> angrily <laughs> amassing on our borders. Cornish granted official national minority status. You can officially be a minority. Thank you, thank you. Cornish now, fuck off. <laughs> what do you get as a minority? You just oppress them. Stuff. I don't know what you do get. That's a good thing. In March, thank Nick Clegg said the government will be investing £120,000 in the Cornish Language Partnership, which promotes the use of Cornish, bringing the total spent since 2010 to more than £500,000. See what we're doing now. This is the sort of thing that if a Cornish Shepherdist sees this, they'll go, right, this is exactly what we're talking about as Cornish people. What? You dismiss our beliefs, our yeah. traditions. We haven't come up with any beliefs apart from pasties and seaside. That's the problem. We haven't been able to think of them, let alone dismiss them. <laughs> that's, how, that's how bad it is in the, in the stereotyping of the Cornish. Yeah, that we don't even like. At least if we're being yeah. against the Scottish, we might. What could we could go? Oh, oh. Mars bar. Songs perhaps. or kilts. K who would yeah. like a kilt? Would you? Who would like a kilt? So if we're doing racism, we have... kilts. Though I discovered the other day, invented in about 1874. Oh. You see, tradition is all invented. Virtually all tradition. How can a kilt invented. only have been invented in 1874? It's a skirt. All it takes is a bloke to put a skirt on. Yeah. Now, what have they done? It took them to 1874 to get your wife's dress on. I do always do that on the first date. <laughs> well, my dear, before the orgasm, I'll put that on. Yeah. Poop, 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 poop. What was that? 
That's the Cornish Separatist special <laughs> cultural dance. Poo poo pee Welcome to Cornwall. <laughs> no, I'm sure there's a proper no, belief no. system. We're just being deliberately ignorant for humorous reasons. There isn't. There can't be. No, no, I love the Cornish, but I don't know if there's a separate identity beyond the fact they live quite a long way from London. There must be, because otherwise, why are they going to all this trouble? But what is it? I know, I know, I know, my partner. You've got your house I've there. I go there all the time. I've got a house there. Goes on all of you there. I do. I'm always in Cornwall. You were there once. I loved it there. And yeah, I know it was very nice. Became part of the Cornish people. I joined in their traditions, their games. I sang their native songs. I felt the salt sea air of Cornwall on my face. And I knew if I ever had this chance to stand up for Cornish separatism, I would. Free Cornwall! Shall we look? Can we do a bit of analysis now? Because that's been yeah. ages. That's at least one episode of the truths. Let's see, come, you could look in one of these books and see if you can find anything and, uh, to well, analyse. Well, you asked me to come in here because I wrote you an email about your analysis of Jacques Lacan yesterday. Oh, yeah. yeah. How, when you take LSD and look in the mirror, you feel that your, um, your um, idea of yourself being dismantled uh, and not necessarily reassembled. <coughs> I recognise my personal empirical experience of taking hallucinogens was, oh, no, what I believe my... Uh, believe uh, the, the belief I have about myself as an object, a sort of a conglomeration of uh, ideas and memories, these, these things are arbitrary. There is no self. Myself is actually this awareness behind all those ideas. And I compared that to the mirror stage, which I thought was a Freudian idea, but you say it's Lacanian. Mm. Explain your thing you explained. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, what did I say? You said I don't know, the I, opposite. I'm slightly worried that... mainly that I looked at my watch while you were talking and it was in the back of shot, and I'm worried now that it will look rude. It will look rude. <laughs> We're going to leave that Because we were talking well. for quite a long time. You know, and at one point I just thought, I look at my watch and I realised I was being filmed. What? I mean, what do you think you're going to do? Like, I what's happening know. at like three, four? Like, just leave oh. if you're busy. <laughs> you've still got to have a relationship to time. I know, I'll still right. be your friend. Okay. So this is what I thought. I thought it was a very interesting thing to say because as far as I understand it, and I'm not an Acadian. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm so tired and bored. <laughs> Thank like God, you're yeah. not a Lacanian. I'm not, no, but as far as I understand it, he says that when the child, the 18 month old child, first understands that it can see itself in the mirror, what that is is a moment where the fragmented and abstract ego that we are before we become, you know, the sort of composite human that we become afterwards, that's the first time it does that. It thinks that's me, that body, oh, that, that is an actual identity, right? Uh, and so you were saying that when you take LSD, and that, that process like almost exactly reverses. So that instead of thinking that is me, because that is just an artificial idea, it's true. That is, the, the me is just a visual representation of self. You know, when you see it in the mirror, you yes. understand it as a together, and a map, as it were, of who you are. That is it. Yeah. Now that then holds in your basic behaviour as that is who I am, but you mm. never actually see it except when you look in the mirror. Which is always. Yeah. Well, you, know, you, <laughs> you do look in the mirror quite a lot. So you must have a very reinforced visual sense of yourself. Yeah. Now, Most do people you, don't have that. They should get one. And, and also off the telly. That's it. Because Lacan never talked about that. He didn't know about TV. He didn't talk about the telly stage. When you the first, telly stage. When you, you first see, see yourself, yourself on, on the telly. Big Brother's Big Mouth. Mm. And you realise that indeed is also who you are. And coming some across like, a bit camp. <laughs> some looking hasn't got his look quite together yet. That'll and, come. That'll <laughs> come. And, 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 and has been sleeping with that bloke, James Harris. <laughs> <laughs> that bloke. And then I've got to stop <laughs> sleeping with <laughs> antiques bloke from Wilgen. Yeah. Hmm, that will be my next phase, I think. Stop <laughs> sleeping. But I'm just going to get these, that, actually, just get these vases, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to that relationship. James, what are these? I don't know, I'm just good. I'm leaving you. I'm taking the vases. Yeah. Once you're through that phase, then you can really, really, really understand who you are. I'm now about to say something clever. Here is that thing. J.D. Salinger, of course, in his book Catch the Rice, talks about he wanted to rescue people from the corruption of adulthood. He wishes that we could remain in this state of purity. Perhaps that Lacanian mirror stage where we start to objectify ourselves, start to have this fortified idea of ourselves, is where that individualisation occurs. Perhaps what I was describing in my hallucinogenic experiences was freedom from that, freedom of self. And if you think, yeah, of course, we have a sort of a biological self, a material self to a degree, and we have to uh, follow our material desires, like our primal desires to eat, and not die and all that kind of stuff. Yes, we do. But if you overstimulate those desires, as is happening in the acculturation process under which we currently live, then we cannot be spiritually free. We do overly identify with the physical self. I am looking in the mirror too much. I did go out with that antiques kid from Logan. <laughs> we must free ourselves I spiritually. I knew you did. I never did. <laughs> that was the truth. That was some truth. That was the truth. truth. That was some truth. <laughs> oh, it's not true. It was a furious <laughs> fictional thing. The That's truth. Absolutely true. It's not true. I'm sorry, Lauren. <laughs> I love you. I'm oh, no, about an hour to get this done. <laughs> Fight that painting! How much is this one? <laughs> oh, two quid. <laughs> Ten a penny, then, well, Ten for twenty quid. <laughs>